Hi guys, a very warm welcome to the Niels Foray Design YouTube channel and again uh, to your questions. Uh, we've uh, gone through quite a selection of them, but please keep them coming in the comments. If you have new questions that we haven't uh, touched on yet in the previous video on this Daytona Shoot and Break homage, please do let me know uh, because the interesting ones are definitely going forward in new videos. And without any further ado, let's start with a question by a fellow Dutchman, Nick de Bruin. And he starts with a very Dutch question, which is, how much is the car? Well, uh, fortunately with a smiley face, because he knows uh, the one thing that I don't discuss and don't disclose is obviously uh, the pricing on cars. Um, but he says, I would like to see longer videos on the design of the car. And perhaps it would be nice to uh, show the classic car, the old car, the 72 Daytona shooting brake next to it as a comparison. So let's actually do that. Uh, and uh, we go through uh, these uh, sketches here. I will start with a side view actually, um, because if you compare it to the 72 car, you can see a few very important things. And um, for that, I'd like to go into Photoshop to explain a little bit more about it. So welcome into Photoshop and welcome to the Daytona shooting break from 1972. Very, very bold car, of course, with this very large surface of glass that runs very deep into the bodywork. Uh, you can see it's uh, sort of on top of the wheel. Uh, on top of the tire let's say uh, and of course uh, there's only a tiny bit of bumper uh, that that ends the car uh, on uh, on the rear uh, so it's it's a very uh, bold very outspoken uh, uh, piece of design and uh, let's flick through a few more images just so you can appreciate uh, how it looks like this very iconic uh, front end of course with this wraparound reflector again that very deep glass and that wraparound reflector again so here on the side view a few things are important to mention um, in in um, well up until let's say late 80s uh, cars were very horizontally orientated so uh, the front wheel here the rear wheel there a little bit of fender flare above that but from the top of the front fender all the way towards that rear is almost just one straight line. So the same goes for the roof that, that drops down a little bit. Um, but there's not a whole lot more space on top of the fender here or on top of the wheel, let's say, than it is there. And that is very different if you would compare that to how a modern car is built up. So you can see on top of the fender here is not a whole lot of meat and there there's a lot more and it's because of that dynamic line that almost every modern car has it just looks uh, a bit more athletic uh, and that, that goes for any car uh, a regular Volkswagen or Kia um, almost every single brand does this now and um, a bar maybe one which is Rolls-Royce which is doing actually the opposite so Rolls-Royce as you can see from the front fender they run downwards they they do the opposite of uh, this sort of fleeting if you like uh, fashion uh, Rolls Royce is more about longevity and and uh, not overly dynamic of course uh, so true design they show that that's the case anyway back to uh, this brand and um, one of the major differences uh, what is also obvious is that this is one continuous flow of a line up until there then there's the B pillar there and then there is actually a break because here it runs down there is no connection between how this line flows because if you would continue that you would see there's this this triangle basically so this is running down and and we did try that in one of the sketches on the modern package and you would see that it actually looks really odd because the brake suddenly is very hard because in this the, the new car uh, and this specific sketch doesn't have it because we found out very early that it doesn't work um, but because of this dynamic line um, we decided to uh, make it flow into the fender and make a very rich rear fender very uh, sculptural uh, with rich muscle around it uh, so 
one of the important uh, changes. And here you can see how harsh that rear end breaks away. And then this lovely cam tail at the back and a very, very clean, maybe too clean uh, side because it is a little bit slap sided. So it's a little bit like a van, it's a bit flat. And uh, again, that's perhaps typical of the 70s. Um, one of the strong features of this car uh, is, is this shark nose. It's very radical, very harsh, um, but it is a bit flat. So that was one of the things that we wanted to change. Uh, we didn't want to carry over the, the flatness and the harshness, let's say, um, but we, didn't want, we did want to carry over uh, this lovely sharp pointy nose, uh, which was quite a change. Uh, because obviously of the modern interpretation of the bumpers. So uh, this is still a front end that has a different interpretation, different headlight graphic, etc. Uh, but you'll see on the final car, uh, we've changed that setup. Uh, the bonnet has moved up 10 centimeters, which is massive in car design, um, to, to make sure we could actually mimic this, this flat front end, um, although we added a lot more sculpture. But what we uh, don't have anymore, if you look at uh, the, the base vehicle from the front, so the 599, it has these fenders, which then go down into the bonnet, and then you have the fender again. Uh, so uh, with uh, a horizontal light bar here, what we've done basically is we, we pushed the bonnet upwards, uh, still with a little bit of sculpture, but we've deleted that dip um, that uh, makes the 599 the 599. Uh, but obviously doesn't make it the Daytona. Uh, here you can see that bonnet uh, being very, very flat. And again, we added a few more lines and a little bit of sculpture moving towards the rear, a few air intakes. Uh, but uh, apart from that, we wanted to keep uh, this balance. So this, the, the 72 car is a bit too flat and the 599 is a bit too busy. Um, when it comes to the interior, uh, we actually will shift the clocks towards the center like they've done uh, for the Daytona. So everything will be in the center stack. And uh, a big change here is all the wood on the dashboard and the doors. Uh, that will actually be carbon fiber in uh, our design. So uh, here again, uh, that rear end, um, very clean. Like I said, slightly slap sided, which you want to change. Um, and that break also in the DLO, the daylight opening, the graphics, we are going to change that and make it a bit more uh, consistent in its form language, but also a little bit more um, strong. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you look at the, the, the curves here, uh, it can appear a bit blobby, a little bit weak, a little bit saggy. And that's obviously something we wanted to prevent. It depends a bit on the view, but here, for instance, with a thick chrome line, um, that is all a little bit heavy. Um, so uh, compared especially to this sharp graphics of the side window, right? So there's a bit of inconsistency there in the design, one could argue. So here again, that front end, uh, not a lot of uh, beautiful stuff is going on here. Uh, it's a bit crude. Uh, a bit rough uh, with this big grill here with horizontal slabs. So that's something we're going to completely change. We we are not doing anything with that. Um, we are uh, carrying over the idea of that big orange ochre yellow reflector. Uh, depends a bit on the light. Um, these very typical big four exhausts in the middle is what we will carry over. That low big rear window in this trapezium shape is obviously something we'll carry over, but all very modernized and, and, and very much changed compared to, uh, to compared to this. And uh, you know, you can see again, if you compare the side views of the two cars, how much the Daytona is horizontally orientated and even leaning a little bit towards the rear, leaning, uh, curving towards the back. Uh, where, uh, of course, a modern piece of car design is always uh, dynamic, moving upwards. Uh, that would be uh, proportionally the biggest change, but then, of course, design-wise, the surfacing, the graphics are uh, quite a bit more sophisticated, a bit more intelligent, if you like, uh, a bit more sculptural, uh, a lot more modern compared to the 72 car. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know with a quick thumbs up and a comment. Please share the video as well if you have enjoyed it. Let me know what you think uh, about the Daytona shooting brake homage and any questions that I haven't answered in the previous videos or in this video yet. Let me know in the comments. I always enjoy reading them and I'll take them forward into new videos. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye.